Now in this problem all the surfaces are smooth. Let's start with the forces on the wedge. Well, this particle exerts a force on the wedge because it's in contact with the wedge, that's perpendicular to surface of contact. Let's say that the magnitude of this force is R. This mass over here exerts a force on the wedge. And uh, let's say that this force here has magnitude T. Now intuitively we can see that this force has probably lower magnitude than this force here. And you know, by the symmetry, by the fact that these angles are the same, it certainly looks like th that's the case. Okay, we have a smaller mass on the right hand side. Um, the mass over here is double. Okay, so let's call this force T. So these are two of the forces on the wedge. Of course, we have the weight of the wedge and uh, we have a force on the wedge due to the horizontal surface. I nearly forgot to mention two other forces acting on this wedge. We have these two tension forces. Now we're dealing with just the same piece of string so that we know from previous videos that tension is the same throughout the string. So we have these two tension forces acting on this pulley. This pulley is meant to be part of this wedge, part of the 4M mass. Um, let's look at the vertical components. Well, it doesn't matter what the vertical components are. If we add up the vertical components of all the forces, we will get zero because the wedge has no acceleration in the vertical direction. Now, what about the horizontal components? Well, you can see from symmetry that the horizontal components have the same magnitude, but point in opposite directions. Uh, that's because these two angles are the same. Okay, they're both, they're both equal to 30 degrees. Okay, because these two angles are the same we are only going to consider the horizontal components of these forces. So the horizontal components are responsible for accelerating this wedge. So we have to take the vector sum of these horizontal components. Now intuitively we can see that this horizontal component has greater magnitude than this one over here. So the acceleration of the wedge, or the resultant force on the wedge, is to the right. So we know from um, previous that our angle in here is the same as this angle, which is 30 degrees. And in an exactly similar way, the angle in here is the same as this angle. Okay, because we have a pair of parallel lines, uh, sorry, a pair of lines that are perpendicular to this pair here. So these angles are the same. It happens to be another 30 degrees. So this horizontal component has magnitude R sine 30, it's opposite 30 degrees. So multiply the hypotenuse by sine 30. And similarly over here, the horizontal component has magnitude T sine 30. So the resultant force on the wedge comes from those two horizontal components. If we take directions to the right as positive, because that's going to be the direction of the resultant force, because intuitively we know that the, uh, this horizontal component is, great, is the greatest in magnitude. So it's plus R sine 30 minus t sine 30. And by Newton's second law, that's the mass of the wedge, which is 4m, times its acceleration, which we will call a. So all the vertical components of the forces on the wedge add up to zero. Only the horizontal components give us this. So this is the resultant force on the wedge. Sine of 30 is a half, so I'll multiply this equation by 2. So we can clearly see that we have three unknowns in this equation. Now let's go and get the forces on each particle. Let's start with the 2m mass. And, you know, like, the wedge is going to accelerate to the right, so the particle's acceleration won't be in this direction, as in the case of a fixed wedge, but will be away from that acts away from a direction parallel to this incline, more or less into the wedge, okay? Because the wedge is going to move along, and so the particle is going to end up somewhere down here at a later time. So that's the direction of the acceleration. So we're going to call it B, and just like we saw previously, for convenience, our positive x-axis is down the incline, and our positive y-axis is perpendicular and into the incline. So we know that 
the uh, x and y components of the acceleration will both be positive. We can guess that the 2m mass is going to move downwards, uh, down the incline, because it's got greater mass than the mass on the other side, and both of these angles are the same, so by symmetry we can be pretty sure that that's what's going to happen. Okay, we have the weight of the 2m mass, and we have <coughs> the force on it due to the wedge. Well, that's has the same magnitude as the force on the wedge due to the particle. It's magnitude r, but in the opposite direction, so that's Newton's third law. Um, we have a force in the string. Now I'm after using the letter T here for uh, the other contact force. So I better use a different letter. I'll call this V. Let's look at the X component of the resultant force on this particle. Well, uh, the weight has a component 2mg sine 30 in the positive X direction. Now the string tension is in the negative x direction, <coughs> and r has no component in the x direction. So by Newton's second law, this equals the mass, which is 2m, by the x component of the acceleration, which we will call bx. Sine 30 is a half, so we get mg minus v equals 2m times b sub x. Now let's look at the y component of the resultant force. So um, in the positive y direction, that's into the incline, we have 2mg cos 30. And we subtract from that r. Uh, v has no y component. And by Newton's second law, that's the mass, which is 2m, by the y component of the acceleration, which is b sub y. Cos 30 is root 3 over 2, so we get root 3mg minus r equals 2mby. Notice here, by the way, that b sub x is not as simple as it was in previous examples. Previous examples, b sub x was just uh, g sine 30, g sine theta, where theta is 30 degrees, regardless of the mass. So the extra unknown here is v, the string tension. Now let's look at the other particle. First of all, let's get, get a rough idea of the acceleration of this particle. Well, well, let's imagine where it's going to be at some later instant. Well, it's going to be somewhere up here. Why is that? Because the wedge has moved forward. So the, surface of the front surface of the wedge could look like this now. And we know the particle is moving around this way, anti-clockwise. So that tells us that the acceleration vector will look something like this. So the resultant force will be in that, that sort of direction. Let's consider the vertical and horizontal, uh, well, the component of, of the acceleration, which I'm calling C, um, parallel to this incline and also perpendicular to this incline. So the component perpendicular to the incline will look like this. It's going to actually point away from the incline. And the component parallel to this incline is going to point up this incline. So this component is C sub, we'll call it C sub x. Okay, let's say x is the component parallel to this incline, where we have a new x axis now, not the same as the previous one. Our new x axis will point in the same direction as this component, so that makes it positive for convenience. And what about our new y-axis? Well, we want that perpendicular to the incline, and we want this component, which I'm calling cy, to be positive. That's pointing away from the incline. So we take our x-axis perpendicular and away from the incline. So this is our positive, or sorry, our positive y-axis. Okay, I'll show the components again, this time in black. So this component is cy. And this component here is going to be c sub x. Okay, so now let's look at this particle over here and get the forces on it in the x direction. Well, um, v is pointing in the positive x direction. That's the string tension. And mg has a component, 
that's in the negative x direction as you can see we know that um, the angle in here is 30 degrees same as this angle so the x component of the weight is minus mg sine 30 Uh, sine 30 is a half. Uh, what else is there? That's it. T has no component in the x direction. So by Newton's second law, uh, the result, the x component of the resultant force is the mass times the x component of the acceleration, which we're calling c sub x. Now for the forces in the y direction, v has no component in the y direction. The weight has has a component mg cos 30 in the y direction, and t in the positive y direction. So plus t minus this component here, it's in the negative y direction, which is mg cos 30, where cos 30 is root 3 over 2. And by Newton's second law, that's the mass, which is m, times the y component of the acceleration, which is cy. Now the next thing we need to do is relate the y components of the accelerations of both particles to a, the acceleration of the wedge. So I forgot to do that for the first particle, so let's go back to the first particle. So I'll show vector A, that's the acceleration of the wedge down here. I'll just show it a bit longer than what's shown there. Um, we know that the y component of A, that's for the first particle, is um, equal to the y component of the acceleration of the first particle. So how do we get AY? Well, we know what we do, we project we, we, get, we resolve A in the direction of the y-axis. So the y-axis for the first particle, remember, was perpendicular and into this incline here. Okay, so here it is again. So we project at right angles onto the y, here's our y-axis. So that's our A sub y, and we, as we saw in a previous video, that's equal to B sub y. We can get a sub y in terms of a, where a is the magnitude of the wedge's acceleration. So we know that this angle is 30 degrees, uh, same as this angle. Okay, so that's the angle of the incline. So here's the hypotenuse. Multiply that by the sine of 30 to get the side opposite of 30. So we see that a y is a sine 30. Sine 30 is a half. Okay, so we can replace by with half a. Okay, so we end up with m. Now we do the same for the y component of the acceleration of the other particle, that is cy. Now we're looking at this xy axis, and you know, if we project particle onto this y-axis here and project a point on you know this side this incline onto the x-axis here we'll see that the y components of the accelerations are the same so this will be the y component of the particles acceleration which is c sub y of course and uh, our incline will have the same magnitude, okay? Because the distance between these two points is fixed, because this particle is connected to the wedge, if you like. It's always in contact with the wedge, so the distance between the center of the particle, say, the surface of the wedge is fixed. So the velocities and the accelerations in the y direction are the same. So we can see that Cy is going to equal the y component of the acceleration of the wedge. So here's vector a for the acceleration of the wedge. Let's get its y component. So there's the y-axis, so we resolve it in that direction. So we project perp the tip of the vector a perpendicular onto this y-axis. Here we have the y component. This is a sub y, which is we know is the same as c sub y. So what's the geometry here? Well, this angle is going to be the same as this angle here. Uh, because this line here is is perpendicular to the y-axis. So in other words, this line is parallel to the x-axis, or parallel to this incline. And of course, A itself is parallel to the horizontal, so 
because it's 30 degrees. Okay, so this angle is the same as this angle here. Now we can clearly see that AY is opposite 30 degrees. So AY is the um, hypotenuse, which is A times sine of 30. Sine of 30 is a half. So now we found CY in terms of A. So we should have enough information now to solve this problem. Now I've highlighted three equations that have three unknowns. We're not going to worry about the other two e equations for now. Um, we're just interested in getting A, the acceleration of the world. Now the easiest way to find A is to make R the subject of this equation, make T the subject of this equation, and plug those two results into this equation up here. So we just have an equation in A only. So if we make R the subject of this equation, um, we get root 3mg minus ma, and over here we get root 3 over 2mg plus half ma. So you can see the right hand side just involve A, and we plug both of these expressions in for R and T. Okay, we'll gather the terms that do not involve A, common denominator here of 2. 2 root 3 over 2 minus 1 root 3 over 2. That's uh, 1 root 3 over 2 mg. That's the term that doesn't involve A. And I'll bring the other 2 over. So we'll have um, plus 1.5 plus 8. That's uh, 9.5 ma. So you can see that A doesn't depend on M. Okay, as an aside, let's get R and T. That's the contact forces between the particles and the wedge. We can get a common denominator of 19 here. Okay, and we plug this quantity in for A. So we end up with 18 root 3 mg over 19 newtons. So to two decimal places, we get 1.64 mg newtons. So I, I didn't bother multiplying by 9.8. Over here, after we've plugged in for A, and leaving it in terms of mg, we get 0.91 mg newtons. So you can see that T is indeed less than R, as expected. Okay, T was the force of the particle on the wedge, or the force of the wedge on this particular particle. And uh, we expected that force to be less than for the 2m mass. Now, as an aside, how would we find the tension in the string? So that's V. You can see that that appears in two equations. But we have to, to look at what Bx and Cx are. Well, Bx and Cx are the components of the accelerations of the particles parallel to the incline parallel to both inclines. But it must be remembered that it's not the acceleration relative to each incline. It's We're looking at the accelerations relative to fixed axes in the background. Okay, So for the 2m particle, bx is the acceleration of it relative to this fixed x-axis, which happens to be parallel to this incline. Okay, So bx is a very different thing from the acceleration of this particle relative to the surface. It's a very different story that we saw in, in a previous video. Okay. Um, but anyway, the same is true for CX. CX is the acceleration of this particle relative to a fixed x-axis in the background, which is parallel to this incline here. But they'll turn out to be the same. So, you know, if we measure the acceleration of the 2m particle along this fixed axis here, we should get the same if we measure the acceleration of the 1m particle along this axis here, because they're connected by this string. So we see that these two things are equal to each other. Okay, so we could, you know, call both of them bx if we like, or call both of them cx, or call them whatever, call them f or something. And uh, you can see then that we will have two equations and two unknowns. Both of these can be solved to find V and also um, the accelerations of both particles relative to those x axes.
Okay, so let's do that. So I've written this equation in, in under this one. If we simply add them, the V's cancel. So we have 1 mg minus a half mg. And uh, I've Cx is the same as Bx, so if we add these, we get 3mbx. Okay, so there's B sub x. It's 1 6 to G. So this component we now know has magnitude 1 6 to G. So that's the component of the acceleration of 2m relative to a fixed x-axis, not relative to the incline. Relative to this incline, it would be greater than 1 6 G because the incline itself is, in a sense, moving up to meet this particle, as we've seen in previous examples. So we would be adding something onto 1 6 G to find a relative acceleration to that incline. Um, okay, over here, we know what this is now. It's got magnitude 1 6 G relative to the background, to an axis parallel to this incline on the background. D a different x, -ax x a different x axis from this particular x axis. Finally, we can get the string tension V. So I'm using this equation here, subbing in for um, 1 sixth G for C sub X. Uh, 3 sixths plus 1 sixth is 4 sixths, so we get 2 thirds mg newtons. In this example, the two particles are not connected by a string. Both particles are identical, and they rest on a wedge of mass 2m. Again, all the surfaces are smooth. We are given both angles A and B. Angle A is greater than angle B. Let's look at the forces on the wedge due to the particles. So, again, we have this force, contact force, on the wedge due to this particle. Let's suppose its magnitude is r. And we have another contact force here due to this particle. Um, now, since both particles are identical, they would exert the same force on the wedge if these angles were the same. But these angles are not the same, so they don't exert the same force on the wedge. Okay, as a matter of fact, this particle here will exert a greater force on the wedge because uh, this angle B is smaller. Okay, this angle is shallower. Um, so we'd have a greater force. Let's call this force N. Now, the vertical components of these forces on the wedge and also uh, the weight of the wedge and the force of the wedge due to the horizontal surface will all cancel out. All the vertical components will cancel to zero. The wedge has no acceleration in the vertical direction. It's the horizontal components that will accelerate the wedge now let's suppose we don't know which um, horizontal component is greater. So we don't know in which direction the wedge will accelerate. We'll just assume that it accelerates to the right. We, we don't know that yet. And we're going to find that acceleration. Okay, like before, we know that this angle in here is the same as this angle here, because we have a pair of lines that are perpendicular to this pair of lines. So the angle between both pairs of lines is the same. And similarly over here, we have a pair of lines that is that are perpendicular to this pair of lines here. So the angle between both pairs of lines is the same. So the angle in here is B. So this component here is opposite angle A, so it's the hypotenuse which is R times sine of A. And as for this component here, it's opposite angle B, it's the hypotenuse, which is magnitude N times sine of B. So let's get the resultant force on the wedge. So all the vertical components cancel out, as we know, and we're left with the horizontal components. And vectors to the right are positive. So R sine A is positive, and this one's negative. So this is the resultant force on the wedge. By Newton's second law, that's the mass of the wedge, which is 2m by its acceleration A. Okay, so we fill in for sine A and sine B. Tan A is uh, 4 thirds, so sine A is 4 fifths. Tan B is 3 quarters, so sine B is 3 fifths. Multiply all this by 5. Now let's look at the resultant force on this particle here. So um, the x direction, of course, is we're taking to be down the incline. Um, 
Okay, so we're assuming the wedge is moving to the right. So some moment later, the wedge is going to be here and this particle is going to be here. So the acceleration is in this direction. So we're going to take the positive x-axis down the incline and the positive y-axis into the incline, just like we did before. That ensures that uh, both x and y components of the resultant force or the acceleration are positive, just to make things easier. So in the x direction, you know, the resultant force is mg sine theta. Well, theta is a in this case. Okay, so in the x direction, the force in the x direction is mg sine a, where sine a is 4 fifths. So 4 fifths mg equals the mass times the x component of the acceleration. So the x component of the resultant force by Newton's second law is the mass times the x component of the acceleration. So like before, we know that b sub x is g sine of this angle. We know that. Um, so g sine theta, or 4 fifths g in this case. Now we are more interested in the y direction, of course. So okay, our positive x-axis is this way, and our positive y-axis is in this way. So we need to get the y component of vector mg. So this should look bigger, of course, because we know the y component is greater than r. So the y component is mg cos a. It's in the positive y direction. So that's this vector here. It's in the positive y direction. Minus r equals the mass times the y component of the acceleration. Now, just like before, we relate the y component of the particle's acceleration to the y component of the wedge's acceleration. So let's do that. So let's draw in this line here parallel to the y-axis. We project onto the y-axis. And here's our y component. And we've seen this several times before. We know that this angle up here is the same as this angle here. So ay is a sine big A. Okay, it's pointing in the positive y direction, where sine of a is 4 fifths. And that's equal to, that's the same as the y component of the particle's acceleration. So we plug our 4 fifths a in for by, and we get this equation here, which has two unknowns. Okay, I forgot to plug in for cos a. Cos a is 3 fifths. So if we were dealing with just a single particle on a wedge, you know, we would just solve between this equation and this one here. We'd have two equations and two unknowns. The unknowns are r and a. The problem here, of course, is that we have three unknowns in this equation. So we, we need more information, and that's where the second particle comes in. Okay, so let's mark in the acceleration of the second particle. So we're assuming the, the wedge moves to the right. So sometime later, the particle will be will have moved to the right and it'll also have moved down the incline. So we can see that the acceleration looks like this. And I'm going to call this acceleration vector C. The other one was B. Um, so we want its positive component to be we want its x component to be positive. So we, we we're going to take the x-axis as down the incline. So 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 here is C sub x. And we want its y component to be positive, c sub y. So we're going to take the y-axis to be out of the incline for this particular particle. So we have a different x, y configuration here. So let's look at the forces. Well, we have mg, of course. And by Newton's third law, the force on the particle due to the wedge is equal and opposite to the force on the wedge due to the particle. So we have n pointing in out this way. So what's the situation for the x direction? What's the angle in here? Well, the angle in here is the same as this angle down here, which is b. It's different now for, for the other particle. OK, we have a pair of lines that are perpendicular to uh, this pair of lines here. So the angle between both pairs of lines is the same. Um, OK, so in the x direction, which is down the incline, we have this component of the weight, mg sine b, where sine b is 3 fifths. We have 3 fifths mg. 
and that's equal to mass by the x component of the acceleration. Okay, so for the y direction, um, so we have this component here, which is mg cos b. Okay, but remember now, the positive y direction is is away from the incline, so n is positive, and this vector is negative minus mg cos b equals the mass of the particle times the y component of the acceleration. Okay, so the y component is pointing away from the incline. So here's the y component. Okay, I've just plugged in for cos b. It's four fifths. Now, like before, we're going to relate the y component of the acceleration of this particle to the acceleration of the wedge. So this time the y-axis is pointing away from this incline. So the y-axis, I'll need to draw this line here parallel to this y-axis and project the tip of a onto this. And here we have the y component. Now this is a different y component from the previous one, of course, because we're talking about a different y-axis here. So we'll forget about all that. Um, just get rid of that. Okay, so what are the angles? Well, this is a horizontal line, and this line here, I projected at right angles onto our y-axis. So this line is parallel to the x-axis, or the incline. So this must be b. Okay, this, we have a pair of lines here that are parallel to this pair of lines. Okay, so we want the side opposite b in this right angle triangle. Remember where the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse is magnitude a, so we multiply the hypotenuse A by sine B, A sine B. So this AY, different AY, is A sine B. Okay, the sine of B is three-fifths. Okay, and AY is the same as CY. Okay, they're not drawn to scale, obviously. Because the particles are connected, the Y components of the acceleration of the particle and the wedge are the same. Okay, for the same kind of reason we ex explained it in a previous video. We project, say, the point on the wedge onto our y-axis and um, project a point on the particle onto the y-axis. This distance r remains constant. So both these projections move at the same acceleration and velocity along the y-axis. So the y-components of the accelerations are the same. So this is equal to c sub y. Okay, so we have m times 3 fifths a. Now at last, we have enough information to find the acceleration of the wedge. We solve between these three equations. So what we will do is we'll make r the subject of this one, n the subject of this one, and plug uh, both expressions into our e equation up here. So we'll get an equation in a only. Okay, so there's R and N in terms of A. A is the unknown. Plug into this equation up here, so we have 4 times R. Um, we have minus 3 times N, so we have minus 3 times this. Um, 9 fifths MA, and we must set this equal to 10 MA. Now notice that the terms that do not involve A cancel out. That actually tells us straight away that A must be zero, okay? Um, so every, all the remaining terms contain A, and uh, if we try to solve this, you know, we have 75M times A is zero, so A is zero divided by 75M, which is clearly zero. So in this example, the wedge does not move. In this example, we have a wedge with a right angle of mass big M, and we have two masses, M1 and M2, attached to a light pulley by a massless inextensible string. The wedge is free to move on a perfectly smooth surface, and we are interested in the acceleration of the wedge. Also, the angle of this incline is theta. Let's consider the, a rough idea of the acceleration of this mass, m1. Well, we've seen previously that 
if M1 is accelerating down this incline, then its acceleration will look like it's going into this incline. That's because at some later time, M1 will be somewhere here, as the wedge has moved to the right. Now, as before, we imagine a fixed X and Y axis on the background, where the x-axis is parallel to our incline and the y-axis is perpendicular and pointing into this incline so that both bx and by are positive. So I'm assuming that m1 is moving down the incline. Let's look at the forces on m1. Well, we have a force on m1 due to the string. Let's say that that force is t newtons. We have the weight m1g and we have a contact force on m1 for force on M1 due to the wedge, so that's at right angles um, to this uh, surface here. Let's say it's R, its magnitude is R. Let's look at the forces in the X direction. Well, um, M1G has a component that's down the incline. This angle in here is the same as the angle of the incline, which is theta, and this component here is M1G sine theta. That's pointing down the incline in the positive x direction. But then we have force T, which is entirely in the x direction, but it's in the negative x direction. Um, R has no component in the x direction, so we apply Newton's second law in the x direction. So we have the mass m1 times the x component of the acceleration. That is b sub x. Now let's look at the wider direction. Um, we have the y component of the weight, that's m1g cos theta, that's positive. And we subtract r, and that's equal to the mass m1 times the y component of the acceleration, b sub y. By the way, this is not drawn very well, um, because we know that B sub Y is pointing into this incline, then M1G cos theta, this component here, is greater in magnitude than R. Now we, we apply what we've seen before. Um, we know that the Y component of A is equal to BY. So let's look at the Y component of A again. Okay, so here's the Y axis. So this line is meant to be parallel to the Y axis. Uh, so we, we project at right angles onto this line and we get A sub Y. Now as for our angles, to see the angle more clearly, we just complete this diagram here. This is angle theta, this is the horizontal. Here's a line parallel to our incline. So over here we have angle theta. So AY is opposite angle theta in this right angle triangle. So AY is A sine theta. So we can write AY in terms of A and as we've seen before, we know that Ay is equal to B sub Y. The Y components of the acceleration of this particle and the wedge are the same. Okay, I gave a detailed explanation of that before, and won't go through it again. So, for B sub Y, we have A sub Y, which is just A sine theta. So that's particle M1. Now let's look at M2. Well, we have the same tension force in M2 as we saw in M1. It's the same piece of string. We have the weight of it, which is M2g. Now, I'm assuming that M2 is in contact with our wedge here. So there's a force on M2 due to the wedge. Okay, and that's perpendicular to the surface of contact. The surface of contact is is um, a vertical line, because um, this wedge has a 90-degree angle here. So uh, this force is horizontal. Let's say its magnitude is n. Now what's the acceleration and hence the direction of the resultant force going to look like? Well, let's assume that M2 is moving up, but M2 is also moving to the right. So the acceleration has a component that's upwards, but it's also going to have a component that's to the right. So the acceleration vector will look like this. It's going to point up at some oblique angle, roughly northeast. Okay, that's not too difficult to see because some moment later, 
the particle will be here you know the wedge will have moved to the right and, and the particle will have moved up so the particle will its acceleration will be in roughly in that direction so let's call the acceleration vector C now let's look at the forces acting in the vertical direction on this particle so we're saying that it's moving up so actually T has we'll have to have greater magnitude than the weight if it's to move up so let's make that look more realistic so if we take upwards as positive because we're assuming that the particle is moving up so we just take the vertical components of the forces uh, so it's going to be T minus M2G this vector N has no vertical component so here are the sum of the vertical components where upwards is positive by Newton's second law that's the mass which is M2 by the um, upwards component of the acceleration so here's the upward component of the acceleration but that's actually the same as B sub X because the two particles are connected okay again this is the actual acceleration of M1 not the acceleration relative to this incline um, that's more complicated this is the acceleration relative to a fixed axis on the background okay but B sub X is going to equal this um, the upwards acceleration of M2 so we've B sub X here because the particles are connected okay those are the vertical forces now let's look at the horizontal forces well T, uh, the tension and weight have no horizontal component so the only horizontal force is N and that's acting to the right so by Newton's second law um, the horizontal component of the, result, of the resultant force on this mass is N equals the mass M2 times the horizontal component of the acceleration well here's the horizontal component of the acceleration but that's just the acceleration of the wedge which we're calling A so this here is just A you see to make that really clear we could consider the um, a horizontal line here and the, the projection of say um, this point of the wedge onto the line and the projection of M2 vertically onto this line and look at the accelerations of both of these projections well they're going to be the same because the distance between these projections never changes because this particle is moving up it's always in contact with our wedge so the distance between particle and wedge remain fixed so the acceleration of particle and wedge horizontally is the same so the horizontal component of C is the same as the wedge it's A okay so we have the forces on particle M2 now let's look at the forces on the wedge itself um, okay we saw that R was the force on M1 so by Newton's third law the magnitude of the force on the wedge is R but in the opposite direction and as for M2 well the force on M2 due to the wedge is N to the right so the force on the wedge due to M2 is N to the left now we've also these two tension forces tension is the same throughout the string so we have these two tension forces acting on the pulley and they have the same magnitude T just like T is the magnitude here and here now we know the vertical components of all the forces on the wedge have to cancel out um, you know the other vertical forces on the wedge are the weight mg and of course there's a force on the wedge due to this horizontal surface acting up but if we took all the vertical components and added them up we get zero because the wedge doesn't accelerate in the vertical direction so um, basically we just need to look to the forces that have horizontal components and that's vector r there's its horizontal component and vector n itself it's entirely in the horizontal direction and if we look at these two forces well T has no vertical this this particular T has no vertical component because this string is vertical but here we have a tension force that does have a horizontal component 
And what's the angle in here? Well, it's the same as the angle of the incline, which is theta. So this horizontal component is t multiplied by cos theta. It's adjacent to theta. And uh, what's this one here? Well, we know that this angle in here is theta. We've seen that before. We have a pair of lines that are perpendicular to this pair. So the angle between them, both pairs of lines, is the same. So we want this here, which is opposite theta. So this here is r sine theta. And of course, we have n pointing to the left. I'll just write that down here. So we have r sine theta to the right, n to the left, and we have t cos theta to the left. So the resultant force on the wedge, let's say, is to the right. OK, that's what we're assuming, that the wedge is accelerating to the right. So directions to the right are positive, so r sine theta is positive. So we're getting the resultant force on the wedge now. It's going to be r sine theta uh, minus n and minus t cos theta. Now, let's go and solve for our unknowns. We have five unknowns, but we do have five equations. Turns out we have enough information to find our five unknowns. Um, so what we will do first of all is solve between this equation here and this equation here, because these are two equations in two unknowns. So simply add these two equations together and from that we can solve for b sub x. Okay, now let's get t. So I'm using the second equation here. So t equals m2g, which is all of this thing here. But I'm getting a common denominator of m1 plus m2. And um, add that thing onto m2 times b sub x. So we have to multiply b sub x by m2. Okay, so there's the m2. And there's our common denominator, m1 plus m2. You can see we're going to get m2 squared g here. And um, over here we get another, we get minus m2 squared g, so those terms cancel out. m1, m2 is a common factor on top. Um, so let's take that out. m1, m2. And uh, we can also take out the g. So I'll just write the g here. And we want to get a 1 for this term, m1, m2, g. And over here we need a sine theta. So there we have it, a formula for the tension in the string for this particular system. So if we know the two masses, m1 and m2, and angle of incline theta, we can get the tension. So let's go back to this equation, which is the resultant force on the wedge. So we found t. And what about n? Well, we can get n in terms of a. So we can plug m2a in for n. And what about r? Well, we can also get r in terms of a, if we rearrange this equation here. So we can get r and n in terms of a. We have t. And on the right-hand side, we have a. So by plugging into this equation, we can find a. So there we have r in terms of a. OK, the only unknown on the right-hand side here is a. And uh, as I said, we have n in terms of a. So let's plug into this equation here. So we have to take r and uh, multiply it by sine theta. And we have minus m1a sine squared theta minus n, which we've seen is m2a. minus the tension, which is this expression, uh, multiplied by cos theta. And uh, that's equal to big M times A. Um, now I've decided not to bother plugging in for T. It's just too messy. So I just put T in here. So we would calculate T first, of course. And with that value, we plug in here for T. And we solve for our acceleration. Now, one way to check this formula, that see that it's consistent with a previous formula, is to let m2 equal 0. That's the second particle. Now, if m2 is equal to 0, 
we just have the situation of a single particle of mass m1 on our wedge of mass big m okay so m2 is gone now and uh, the tension is also going to go because you know the string is not attached to anything so t is going to drop to zero so if m2 is zero t is obviously going to be zero so we have this situation here that we covered in previous videos so um, let's see what happens to this formula so we set t equal to zero and m2 equal to zero and we get m1g cos theta sine theta over m plus m1 sine squared theta now if you look back you'll see that this is indeed exactly the formula for a mass m1 or m as we called it in the previous video on a wedge of mass big m um, uh, that's the acceleration of the wedge